Good evening, everyone. Hello, Calling the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for March 31st, 2022 to order. At this time, I'll ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for anyone interested, there are masks and hand sanitizers available at the front of the room. First order of business is to review and approve the minutes for the February 19th, 2022 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. <clears throat> Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to approve the minutes of the February 24th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is to approve the minutes of the March 9th, 2022 special meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to approve the minutes of the March 26th, 2022 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the treasurer's report. Okay, something that we briefly talked about the workshop. I didn't get a chance to stop in much at all this week. We're gonna go over and create a form just for the reconciliation uh, aspect of reviewing the uh, records. So we're gonna have that form. So we'll be bringing that to the meeting so you guys can take a look at that and review that as well. If everyone wants to take a look, we have the budget um, up on the board. There's a couple of items I just want to bring to our attention. I apologize, Jim, you don't have a copy if you wanted to take a look at this. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's quite a bit of data. So um, Peter did post on the website, but we're going to try to make sure we do this routinely as this was part of uh, Aiken's request that we review at the meetings as well. Um, under 300, it should be up there now. Yeah, so um, if you notice, uh, it does it display it. Yeah, it displays it. So the over budget. Um, so most of the revenue that we collect from taxes are actually collected at the beginning of the year. When you're entering the data into the program, it only allows you to split it between 12 months. It's very weird. You have to do the math and put in a sum for each month. So to me, this looks like we're on target, but it, it, it appears as if there's an excess, but there's not. And just more people pay like a certain time of year. And that's why it seems like we have all these funds sitting in there. But because of the way the program runs it, and maybe I have to work with you about it, how I could get the report set up differently. Sometimes it's playing with the parameters and it gives us different information. Um, it should be up there if you want to scroll down to three, the 320s. Um, if we look at 321.80, we actually did receive a chunk more from the cable uh, TV franchise. So I'm assuming that's because people are getting bigger packages because everyone's been at home a lot more. Um, don't, we can scroll down to, let's see, well into the, so if we look at the uh, zoning permits, so there's a big increase from what is on the budget, the 360s, 360. So, so, so there's, there's a difference in amount of what we budgeted versus Well, this is our budgeted column, correct? Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's not that much. Okay, forgive yeah. me. I had looked at the uh, thing. So, uh, yeah, so I apologize. Oh, oh, okay. So, so yeah, so this is the budgeted. This is the how much we're over. Again, it's the program on how you have to enter in the data. Part of, of the big jump in the zoning permits is actually from Dutch Valley. Um, so we, there was, there was one item and it'll be in the bills. There was a $15,000 permit from Dutch Valley. So that's where there's a big jump there. Let me get my pages in order. Um, under the 400s, if you could scroll down to the 400s or scroll up whichever direction. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, advertising, printing, and binding. We've had to do a little bit more advertising. It's not that much of an increase, um, but when others charge us more, we can't control that. So there's a little bit of a jump there. Uh, under 405, that's a clerical error on our part. We did not include the uh, pension contribution. So that's something we have to remedy on our next budget. So that's, that's something that I caught today. 
You want to scroll down to 408. So 408 is now engineering services. That was something that Aikens had us make a correction. So rather than having everything under um, permits and zoning, they wanted us to bump out everything related to engineering. So we're going to see that number. And again, that was not included in the budget because this was done after their um, audit, but and way after we had designed our budget and so just assigning numbers. As a serious question, because yes. it's the same amount of money, it's, yes. it's two halves of the same pie. Yes. Should we amend the budget, make a motion and amend the budget so that it's it's different, so that it's not showing up as an overage? Yes. Okay. okay. So we'll do that for next meeting. We'll figure out exactly where that's going to fall okay. in the forecast, but we'll we'll do that. Okay. And that was definitely for their request. Um, and then if we look under 409, the public utilities and natural gas, again, something that is not in our control, prices have gone up. The other part of this is the, the horrible insulation in this building or lack thereof. Heating and cooling is just going to keep on going up as, uh, as oil prices and gas prices continue to go up. So there was a significant bump up in it. And trust me, Sue and I just sit in that room. The rest of the building is not heated. So yeah, the rest of the, the rest of the building's yeah. at 65 normally, and you don't even turn the heat up in the office no, that much. Not at all. So. All right, go down to 410. And if we look at um 410.30, the 17,000 is a bit over, and that's because a December payment was captured into 2022. So it's just over by one whole payment for police service. Okay. So did they is there a reason that wasn't accrued in 2021? Um, probably because the check was sent out in January because we received their bill like a month later. Uh, okay. So by the end of the year, our numbers should It'll match, balance out but because the way it looks at on today's budget. So um, again, like this is a process I'm hoping to do throughout the whole year. Sorry, it's boring for everyone. Um, under 429, uh, that was the only other thing, uh, sewage enforcement officer. So we have a big jump and that's because of the program that we implemented. So again, I don't necessarily think we need to change the budget for this year, but we, what it is going to be a learning curve because now we're able to track all the data. It's going to be very helpful for us to know what it's going to be like next year. And next I, year we'll have a past. Yeah. Year. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll know exactly what, what is. And then the rest of the items, for the most part, there's there's nothing in them. If you see a lot of zeros in the categories, simply because those items weren't paid or used or anything throughout the year. So we're just going to keep on top of trends and see if there's anything else that is going to change over time. But I'm hoping that we did some sound planning with the exception of um, the only thing we really couldn't anticipate is um, the... Uh, uh, that little bit of overage with the um, sewer enforcement officer. Uh, the other part of things too is now that we're recapturing costs that we are now billing for things that should have been billed for when it comes to engineering as well as legal services. We're going to see a little bit of a difference in the number there and one year's performance is going to be kind of difficult how to figure that out and I'm actually going to have to because the program will not let me print out the data for it and so I, I didn't know how to incorporate in, into here so i'll look at it right, it's, it's another numbers thing that we're going to have to work with and, and see how it plays out yeah. in total so that is my lengthy boring treasury report <laughs> the other thing i'd like to include is if sue if we could just document who is allowed to sign checks mm -hmm. um so if you could just list myself jim and peter in the minutes and this way i could bring that over to the bank i just want to continue to have a healthy relationship with the bank and have them aware of who is authorized to sign the checks and just make sure that this is included annually with our um, meeting minutes. Yeah, additionally, when you do the minutes for this, please highlight that Irene went over the, the budget actuals in depth. I think that's yeah. going to be important from, do you from Aikens. Put each no, 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 no. Just, no, just say no, that no. she she did it, right. that it was reviewed yeah, by like, the board. Because in the depth. auditor reviews yeah. our, our meeting minutes right. and we want to make sure that, you know, we're doing this exercise for us as well as everyone in the audience, but we're also making sure that we're, we're, we're tweaking what we're doing so that we're in the best financial health we could possibly be in. So, yep. and we're not missing things. And, and always another set of eyes, you know, always helps out. Absolutely. Okay. Anything, for, anything further on that? No, no. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve the payment of the bills for March, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, anyone <laughs> wishing to address the board can do so by coming up. Uh, please stand in front of the microphone and, and speak towards it. That way you can be captured on the, the recording. Um, if you have not signed in on the sheet, please be sure to sign in so that we know who made a comment. Hello. My name is Beverly Brossman. I represent Edna Modernis at 412 South Water Street, Stassburg. Uh, I approached the committee last month about the potholes on Sheridan Road. I did not realize that there's more roads with Sheridan on it. So the road that I'm talking about is the road where you go outside of Stassburg and make a right and go towards an immense town. Mm -hmm. That needs uh -oh. to be addressed. Yeah. So we need to get cold patch. They only start selling cold patch, I think probably mm -hmm. in, I was gonna mm -hmm. say it's either end of April or early May. And as soon as we have cold patch, that's one of the things that Butch and the other road crew is gonna go and, and do is start aggressively patching potholes. But right now, short of millings, we don't have anything that we can patch with. Okay, my, my other thing is, and I don't know how to word this, I'm not, really high on words, but uh, it was brought to my attention that, um, and here at the meetings, you might sell the building. Now, when you do that, are you planning on selling the land that's over there where the playground is? The land is actually, and I'll, I'll defer to Irene here, but it's got a pretty heavy deed restriction on it, that the land and the building are kind of irrevocably tied together. No. Yes. Definitely. No, I have my mother's lawyer working on this. That property over there never belonged to Conrad Weiser District. Never, ever. When my mother brought the property from Mr. H I forget his name, from the man, he owned her property here and all of this land here. The stipulation was when they signed and she bought it that that land all that land there had to go to Marion Township people it, and it could never be sold I do not have a deed and I talked with the ladies mm -hmm. I do not have a deed I went and checked it out there was never a deed made okay but what they did was word of mouth which I've already been told word of mouth isn't any good anymore so my question is, is now how are you just going to work that out? You're just still going to sell that land over there that really wasn't supposed to be sold? It would be whatever the, the content or, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it would be whatever the legal requirement is on the deed is what we would have to abide by. We should check if we own it. Yes, I mean, obviously. Yeah, yeah we obviously can't sell it. something that's not everybody. And if, if we own it, then we can only sell it based on what we're allowed to sell it. So if it's if there's a deed restriction, there's a deed restriction. If not, then it's then we have to we have to sell it based on what the township Sigles Township Code says. Yeah. Everybody just assumed that because the building here that that over there was with it, but it never was. Yeah, and just so that you understand, this isn't set in stone, but we're we're assessing options because the building is okay for what it's used for, but it's really not well suited to a lot of the it's things that the township okay. needs yeah. to do so obviously as andy said if it's not something that's actually with the building if it's not something that's ours to sell we obviously can't sell it the intent here is if we were to move to a different location build a new building is we would put a similar size space in for recreation as well we'd put in a playground we put in a ball field we'd have all the things that we we'd have here just somewhere with a newer facility. So again, very early stages. It's not something that has been really heavily decided upon other than looking at it from a cost standpoint. I think that this should have been taken care of years ago because the deed includes that piece. It does include it. No, it, it, when they bought it, a, a deed never was, another deed was never made. The deed that he, we have for us, our deed includes that property. So I think that when it was originally done, somebody missed they missed a step yeah because the deed says this building and that land are together yeah. so yeah. good luck i don't know how that'll ever come out because the deed that's on file if you probably saw it includes both parcels okay
Seeing no other public comments yes. at this time, we'll move into the main items. Uh, Sue, there is nobody on the, the Zoom presently. I'll check back in a couple of minutes. Okay. Agenda item number one is the Marion Township Community Association Car Show. The Community Association is holding a car show on May 14th, 2022 uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, they will need fire police coverage, so I'll be reaching out, uh, as I had done a couple of years ago, to get volunteers from the various uh, municipalities that have that. Um, we will need to decide what roads will be closed, traffic patterns, parking, et cetera. Um, I did send the original traffic plan from the first car show to the community association, and I also have it up here. We discussed this at the meeting last night for the car show. Don has a, a map and he's put everything together. Don's done a fabulous job with that. I appreciate it, Don. Okay. So this is, this is the original one for purposes of discussion. Um, Don, when you guys discussed this, did you kind of arrive at a, a similar sort of pattern to what we had the first year or are you looking to do something different? Uh, Sorry. Okay. We can't, from the, what we have there, we're still looking for the main parking lot, uh, at the playground. Mm -hmm. We do have permission to get parked at the church and we do have uh, permission to park uh, on, the, on the north side of Main Street at um, uh, Twi uh, Twila. The Twilight Acres. Acres. Yeah. The one behind the fire park. park. Yep. So of course, we don't want to take as much parking away from her business as possible. So uh, it's more or less from uh, the alley here hmm. will be one way from east to west up to church street church street will be the main exit from this side of town uh as far as parking cars in, in the car show yeah it will go past church street and up to the alley where there's uh peter McCart uh, peter wallace's house mm -hmm. uh, if things go the way they are we may have to go either that further that way or down past Mary Kepley's house. Mary Kepley's house is at the corner of Marion Drive and Main Street, and that is still being planned on being registration. Okay. If I can suggest, because I know it, things kind of fell apart the first year with mm -hmm. parking, mm -hmm. um, that's sharp. sharp road. Yeah, I would still suggest keeping sharp as your main in and out because you can bring traffic up two directions with that. You can have registration at Mary Ann's house bring people in and because of the restaurant not being there anymore, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to have any traffic for crossing in or church and maintenance. You could actually just close that intersection off and just park cars rather than having to have people, uh, I think it was, was Brad, not Brad, um, Dave McCall, that was doing like mm -hmm. the traffic policing for that last year. Um, with that being closed, you could just kind of put a, a no uh, road, road post sign up here and you just park the whole way from Sharp down to you could go as far as Bob Nelson's house. Okay, so if you're using Sharp Road to park at the playground and back here, yeah, uh, are you making that too? Uh, how, are you, how are you bringing people off the highway so to back here? Anybody that would be coming off the highway, we want to make sure that people come kind of in the long way because if they come in this way, that you're not you're yeah. not going to be able to get them through no matter what you do. And if you bring people in on me, if you really want to have somebody playing traffic cop, which I, I, I would highly encourage you to have as few moving pieces as possible, you, you'd have to have somebody ferrying that in. And again, the concern like we had talked about the first year, we couldn't get around to the restaurant, was we could have a situation where we create a backup on the highway. That's the last thing. That's why, that's why I learned it down to share the road. Yeah. To keep all traffic off of 422 and coming in. Entering Stouchburg yeah. on the east. So if you have uh, eastbound traffic on 422, I would suggest having it come all the way down to Sheridan and then I come up now. Or come up now. Okay. Other break up for now, but I have to use a show car. Okay. okay. Yeah. You, you know what I mean. <laughs> bring, bring them in one of these two roads rather than try to bring them in. And then likewise, when you have even people entering or exiting, you can direct them down sharp. So they're completely away. You don't have that one-way situation with the alley that you and I dealt with. Right. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to do a different set of 
Yeah, and the reason that we ran into that problem with the alley is because we actually had more cars show up than we were even anticipating or hoping for, and people started parking the cars past Sharp, the, the show cars. So because we had cars parked there, we had to start funneling in the alley to be able to, to actually get people to the, well, the ball since, field. Since you're going to have two lanes for the car show at Marion at, at Drive, mm -hmm. the ones who are registered and the ones who are pre-registered. Yeah. So if you're going to have the general public coming up to Sharp Road, that means you're going to have about three, three lanes on Main Street. Well, think about this this way. Main Street's pretty wide, and you're not going to have uh, eastbound traffic because of it being closed. So you're effectively oh, going, uh, yeah, excuse me, uh, westbound traffic from east. Um, you're not going to have one whole normal lane of traffic. So you could actually have the one lane and then two lanes for registration pretty easily. If memory serves me, that's what we did the first year is we had anybody that came in Marion and wanted to turn going east, they were able to because that lane was still open. And then we had the two, yeah, the we two. Want to complete, we want to do away with Marion Drive. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, I would say we just close off Marion Drive and everybody could, we could, as long if Marion Drive is closed, that, that solves that problem. You go up far enough, like right around Marion Kepley's house and you, you, you're back to that. You only have really one way yeah, of moving I mean, traffic the north side of town uh is open to a lot of traffic in and out it's uh, yeah okay so let me let me redraw that a little bit i'll send that back out to the community association i'll just i'll take this and i'll, I'll change a couple of things on it and see what your thoughts are um jim and i do you kind of Meeting in okay, um, Jim, you'll be at the meeting in April. Okay, if I can be there too, I'll try to be there too. But uh, you kind of understand the the thought process here is keep traffic moving right. one mm -hmm. one way so that we don't have. In, in addition to that, when are we doing street tweaking? Uh, it's either the tenth or the eleventh. It's May. the tenth. It's it's do we yeah. do we send a notice out to everybody on we, that? We put up no, signs. we put up signs. Yeah. Signs. Can we also put on those signs that we need them to be off the street on fourteenth? Yeah. Yes. So the, the way we've yes. done this, yeah. the way they've done this before is we put two signs up. We put one for street sweeping, one for the car show. Mm -hmm. When the street sweeper goes through, we take the street sweeper one down and we leave the car show up until the day okay. like after the, the car show so because i told don he should just charge ten dollars to anybody that leaves their car <laughs> or 15 day of show yeah, Kelly. <laughs> yeah they're they're a show car now Good. Speaking of that, one of the things that I did want to bring up after the car show is the community association yard sale is going to be Saturday, June 4th at 7 a.m. It's open to anybody in the township. If you want to put a table out, it's just a thing that we've advertised. So hopefully people, uh, come in from externally or get out within the township and see what what everybody has for sale uh the community picnic is going to be on june 26th at 12 noon right here in the playground and the community association is selling justino sandwich tickets again uh, they are seven dollars and fifty cents this year uh just like you said everything goes up everything gets more expensive oh, yeah. uh, but they are quite good so i, I highly recommend it because it's a, a delicious sandwich and for a good cause um, anybody that wants to be there, as Kelly mentioned, the next meeting for the MTCA is April the 14th at 7 p.m. at the Marion Township building. So, and you'll uh, be getting us some, a, a flyer so we can make copies so we could distribute them even further. Okay, thank you. We also discussed last night putting a, a lighted sign on 422. We had originally talked about putting one on just one side of the road. It would be an expense of about $605. If we put one on both sides, which I think is appropriate, there's a little discount. It's about a thousand dollars. So I'd like to make a motion to make a donation to the oh, MTC. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. So two two questions. First one is how are they getting power to them? Solar. 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 Okay. That's that's good. That's the first question. And the second thing is because of the changes in the sunshine law, we either have to amend. Right. This is these. a pretty MTCA community association car show is a pretty broad. Yeah, that's what I mean. We, we would either have to amend the agenda or we can put it on the next month's workshop meeting. Depending on when they want to get the signs, we could just put it on the next agenda and have it be entirely. And you, can we airtight. add that to MTCA car show? I mean, I don't it's, have a, it's kind of loose. Yeah, we can we can vote to amend the agenda to okay if you want to vote on it. Tonight. Well, I mean, just just so that Jim understands, we have to we have to jump right. through a hoop here that we either have to amend the agenda or just put it on the next one. Then I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to include a donation. Speak for the up MTCA. so I can hear you, please. 
I said, I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to add a donation to MTCA. For? For $1,000. I'll second. Hang on. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, so now, so now it's, do we need to, yeah, so, so, so yeah. Jim, this is going to be signed, kind of circuitous. You now have to motion to give them the money. So we, we motion to create the agenda item. You now have to motion oh, okay. to actually give them the money. I'll make a motion to donate $1,000 to MTCA for the Jim Kepley Memorial Car Show. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the. So, excuse me. Yep. So you don't yep. want a motion tonight to close Main Street. I mean, we, we can. I just, yeah. I'm just asking because you so, got it. You guys have to decide and make a motion. So do we want to do that now, or do we want to know? Do we want to do that next month when we have all of the, the road closures? Because I'm going to want a motion to put up the signs specifically in specific spots. So just asking. I mean, yeah, well, it's a good, it's a, it's a good point, but I think rather than doing half now, half later, we'll just do it. Okay. At, um, okay. Act 537. The SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest District. Uh, just to reiterate, we had reached out to Tim Wagner uh, and. The DEP confirms that there, there really is no exception to this. If you have a septic system in Pennsylvania, you are subject to the requirements around inspection. Um, no one can be excluded, just to, to ring that point in. Uh, the next step is the income study. I've been in contact with Colleen Terry, trying to find a mutual spot in our schedules. Uh, it looks like tomorrow at 11 a.m. If anybody would like to be included on that, I'd be happy to, to dial you. And I think she's just going to call me at 11. Okay. But uh, that'll be the, the initial discussion on what we have to do to get the income study started, which will be good for uh, the requirements of the Act 537 and for things like looking for grants. So can I, I, I yeah, can be honored if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I'll, bring I'll, me when in. she calls me, I'll ask her to, to hang tight while I dial you in. So. Okay. Um, if it, it's more like a, what's the word I'm looking about, uh, administrative kind of a question about this. Mm -hmm. Since uh, we're going with the plan with having Alan do the pump outs, can we consider possibly sending a letter to about a dozen or so of the pumpers letting them know what our ordinance is? I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. And our ordinance is posted on the website? It, uh, that's a good if, idea. Yes. Pretty sure it is. It, it, I'd have it, to check. Yeah. That's yeah. a good, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we could just say, hello, just by the way, blah, 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 a couple of flight sentences, please refer to the website and we'll give off the call. I'll, I'll actually, yeah. I, I know it's up there, but it, it may not be the easiest thing yeah. to find. I'll actually put that in that little like yeah. action center thing for yeah. like things about Act 537 right. and the on lot. Right. So I'll, I'll do so that. They're, they're on notice. Yeah. And I could create a spreadsheet of, you know, who we've reached out to. So send out a dozen letters every year this way everyone knows yeah and yeah it, honestly it might not be a bad idea for alan yeah to just send some i'm sure he probably has something already partially prepared if not prepared and he's going to have a call. list of the pumpers I'll give him so a call. rather than making poor <laughs> sue do that no no, no, no. i would i would be doing that. yeah well i mean even yeah. you doing it, you're gonna have you're gonna have to hunt around he's gonna yeah. know who who yeah. who in, in that particular you should make thing. it clear yeah. in that yeah. letter that he has to be present so we're not putting yeah. the entire onus on the property owner right. to coordinate this. If the pumper knows about it, they can also make sure that they, yep. it's all being coordinated so that Alan's there. I agree. Yeah. They should all know. Everyone has the same ordinance. They had to adopt it statewide. But look, I just had to do mine at my house. Yeah. So I just called my pumper. He takes yeah. care of everything. Yeah. Calls, and actually, we have Alan do it where I live. He calls out and sets the whole thing up. I just get a bill when it's done. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Well, that, that's the way it so, should be. That's yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. If you're using, you know, if you've got a hole outside the air, maybe they'll know. Right. Right. Using somebody from Lebanon or Burks, they should not. Speaking of that, the next thing is the holding tanks. Um, so Alan brought to our attention that there are uh, some things that have been, I'll say, deficient long term about the holding tanks in the township. Um, under the sewer management program, we actually have an ordinance for this already. The, there's supposed to be an agreement around having a, a holding tank that has been not uh, enforced, uh, and there's supposed to be annual inspections on that. 
So he had some suggestions in that email and they all are, are pretty good. Um, really any of the, the pre-existing tanks have to be sort of treated as a kind of a pre-exempt or grandfathered state. Mm -hmm. uh, but going forward, anybody that puts in a, a tank should be subject to um, the, the agreement. Um, just, just to be really clear, the, the grandfathered ones aren't gonna be exempt from having to be inspected. We would just change how that works a little bit. Okay. Um, namely, the $50 fee on the tax bill for anybody that has a holding tank would fall off because of having to have theirs inspected at a much uh, more frequent interval. Uh, that's that's going to be different for them. I, I guess the other part of that is Alan is going to be able to give us a detail over who has what. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's, yeah, we don't even know what the situation is on some properties. So the next thing also in the, the area of sewer management is the sewer levy. Um, it's come to our attention that there are a couple that maybe were billed on a wrong parcel. For example, there was one that uh, showed an address but doesn't actually have a house on it. Um, we had a situation where there are some mobile homes that are not actually treated as real property. So they are billed separately. You get a bill for the ground and a bill for the property. Um, we should decide amongst ourselves how to handle that. My personal suggestion would be if you are billed incorrectly, whether it's for a uh, property that doesn't have a septic system on it, or if it's a double billing situation where you're billed for the ground and the property, we should refund the incorrect oh. bill. Uh, likewise, if there are shared systems, and that was something that Alan brought up, um, any shared systems, uh, when he determines who is sharing the system, that it be prorated. If there's three systems sharing, everybody gets uh, two thirds of it back. What are your, your collective thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there was some information we didn't know before we sent it out and then it was like, oh, okay, we, we made this error. And that's exactly what we've been telling the residents because a couple people have been angry about it, but no, absolutely. Well, Sue's been making it clear that we can't take it off the tax right. bill. Yeah. Right. We, don't, we don't generate the tax bill. So you've got to pay it and we will reimburse you in a, yeah. as quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah, if there's something that's not right, we'll we'll endeavor, we'll do everything we can to make it right. And then we'll make sure that this doesn't happen next year. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Unless the tax credit and the tax credit is mine. Yep. Yeah. That when people do have something like this happen, mm -hmm. she knows how to respond. Yeah, we'll, we'll send something to Eileen. But we had yeah. somebody who was uh, fairly upset about this, and I talked to her the one night, and we, we smoothed it over, and I explained to her, like, the, the situation that you're in is very different than a lot of the other properties. It's a pretty unique situation, which is why this happened. You shouldn't pay for the same thing twice. None of us want you to do that. So if you, if you actually have this happen, we can't change the tax bills. If you pay it and you send us something, send it something into the office so that we have something in writing, we'll reimburse one of them so that it's right. right. We already gave Eileen a list as well of, of the properties that, that this error was made. So she's aware of it and she's keeping track of it too. Lee, did I see your hand up? Yes. Um, what's with the holding tanks? Uh, you're billing the people the same for the holding tanks, but in the zoning, you're supposed to clean them every year. That's what we were just saying. Okay. Is you have holding tanks, we don't even know what you have. We don't know. Right. Well, that's that's the biggest that's problem. We don't know what systems people have. So as they're uncovered, and this is what I had said just a second ago, there's a lot of them that are pre-existing. They don't have the holding tank agreements that was never enforced before. So we need to start getting people on to that, that routine. You don't even know that they've been put in two years ago. Yeah. So this is something that the prior, right. prior SEO up. did not do. And this is something that we are now aware of and we're trying to, to remediate. Because one of them's right alongside of me is a new holding tank in there two years. Mm -hmm. He never cleaned it. Well, he's going to have so to start then, cleaning it. He knows nothing about it. Nobody explained anything to it. It's a young kid yeah. that bought the house. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's going to change. Well, he got the same $50 as we did. Yeah. Well, he's supposed to be cleaned every year. Yeah. <coughs> we'll refund his $50 yeah. and then yeah. he'll be on a different schedule. Yeah. So he has to be inspected every year. Then. Holding tanks yes. by state law have to be inspected every year. And that's something that has not been very similar to people inspecting their, their systems every four years. It's just never been enforced previously. And they're also supposed to be pumped, obviously, periodically. We have some in town that have never been pumped ever. 
And who started this? Did you do the layout of what? No, Lee, the, the, the Act 537 plan, like I got very few things changed, if any. I think most the, the most noticeable thing was the uh, the time frame allowing us to get funding. Because Every, I still went after you for Lee, man, I really wish you spent half as much time cleaning up your yard as you do attacking me at meetings. I really do. Because there there is no conflict, Lee. If you if you want to continue to pursue that, you have every God given right to do that. But the the very definition of conflict is getting some preferential or beneficial treatment that other people aren't getting. The entire time that I have been sitting up here on on this side of the desk, I have done nothing but try to get the best for everybody else and to make sure that there is the least impact if there is something bad for everybody involved. So it, again, if you want to talk to an attorney please do. If you feel that there's some slight or wrong, please do. But I, as far as I am concerned, and as, as far as legal counsel has given me, I am not in conflict for anything that I have done in the entire tenure of me being a supervisor. I would agree with that. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Do we have anything else on the sewer levy or the holding tanks can i just have one thing can we just make sure we get those requests for refunds in writing yes absolutely every everything has to be in writing. so mm -hmm. if somebody calls in and has that we just say like please send a letter in or drop it off or whatever and we'll, we'll take it but everything has to be in writing okay. i hate to say it should we even just create a pre a, a form. Made form yeah and that's, this way i think that would be much easier for some people yeah, that would that would save headaches yeah mm -hmm. i'll work on that with you okay. soon Okay, next is the trash and recycling contracts. A special meeting was held on Wednesday, March 9th, 6 p.m. to review the bids. Uh, we received only one bid from JP Mascaro. Uh, the initial three-year contract without a container was $96.04 for trash and the uh, recycling option of $43.15, totaling $139.55. Uh, with containers, trash was $100.85, recycling was $47.96, totaling $148.81. Uh, there was a per bag option for seniors for eight dollars uh, we rejected the bid for cost reasons and a motion was made to renew the two-year contract with eagle okay next item on the agenda is the main street traffic study uh, this was performed for stop signs at church and main water and main sharp and main uh, by traffic planning design and uh, incorporated uh, we have received the report uh, we started looking through it but uh, the engineer and the solicitor are also going to be reviewing it as well so more on that at next month's meeting, but for the time being, we have the report back, but no action needed. Okay, next item is the Patrick subdivision. Uh, two waivers have been requested. Uh, one's of uh, the Saldo section 3.02, all subdivisions that are not exempt from standard procedures shall make a separate preliminary and final plan application. Uh, and the second one being section 4.31, plan scale is required to be one inch equals 50 feet. Uh, grading and permit erosion controls are drawn at one inch equals 40 feet. The Planning Commission has reviewed this and recommends that the Board of Supervisors grant the two waivers. The Planning Commission also recommends that the Board of Supervisors grant conditional final approval based on the February 22nd McCarthy Engineering Review Letter. I've looked over this briefly. I don't have any objections to that. They're all pretty straightforward. Not here. Okay, so I'll make a motion to grant the two waivers as requested for saldo section 3.02 and uh, section 4.31. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Let me know when you're done writing, so you're good. Okay, uh, I'll make a, a motion then to conditionally approve the final based on McCarthy Engineering's review letter. Second. <laughs> Proxies, 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 Super yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who wants it? Can, Irene. Yeah. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Next item on the agenda is the collection of engineering and other administrative costs procedure proposal. Um, Kozlov Stout sent us the proposal over. And uh, having looked over it, I, I think it's good. I think it's oh. fantastic. So Thank please pass, pass well, the thanks yeah. along to Alicia. Thank you. Yeah. It just oh, puts yeah. a little bit more teeth. Unfortunately, it puts a little bit more work on your ends or you just stick it in file until I have a problem with it. So 
it's, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll act when we need yeah. to, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. So while we're on the subject of, wait, do we have to make a motion? So, you oh yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'll make a motion to accept and approve the use of the collection uh, cost procedure proposal. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, while we're on the subject of that, Jim, at the workshop meeting, you had some questions around some of the other ordinances, like the property management. Yeah, I'd, I'd like Andy to look at that. And I really think that there should be increased fines for non-compliance. So if, we, if, we're, if we're notifying somebody that they need to clean their lot, for example, the first fine is, I think it's tapped at 50 to, 50 to $100, and it never goes up. I mean, I'd like to see us put some teeth into that so that it's maybe it's 100 and then it's 300 and then it's 500 or whatever. And right. at some point, the person that's getting these letters or getting these fines is going to say, I don't think I want to pay $1,500 or maybe even make it $5,000 at the top end if you, if you ignore us four times. Yeah, you, you I don't know if we that. can do no, that or not. A it's a massive. Uh... I think it's five hundred. Is it a thousand or is it five hundred? No, it's a max thousand. Okay. Well, I think our ordinance is a max of is it five hundred or is it yeah, one hundred? I, I, I think say, it's one hundred. I want to say five hundred is the max on that. I, can I'd I have. Make, can I make a comment? Yeah, that? absolutely. It's, it's five hundred. Thank you. Because my mother had gotten a letter when she had the barn out back there, and she had a whole lot of trees. Well, that but that, that was before. Yeah, that was that was that was actually a completely different that ordinance. Before. That was the. Um, we're, uh, talking the, the, we're talking about the property maintenance. Yeah, we're talking we're property now. maintenance. That was, I, I know what you're talking about. That that goes back quite a ways. And that was yeah. the, the same ordinance that used to do the grass. It's like the, the weeds yeah, ordinance. It's called the junk ordinance. The junk, thank you. Keep in mind, this, this is all discretionary with the judge. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that, it's kind of out of your hands. Yeah. And the judge is normally well, you will know, not somebody, max you know, somebody somebody pays, the If somebody pays the guilty, he, he's fine on $100 already. So they plead guilty the second time, mm -hmm. six months later, they pay a hundred dollars. They get they plead guilty six months later, it's a hundred dollars. That's not enough to get somebody's attention. Yeah. Okay. Well, when take when can we it. when we, can we, we impose that we can go in and clean it and send you a bill? Is that in the ordinance? To, to go on someone's home? To go on, to go on, on their property. property. You're gonna clean need an it. well, you need an administrative search warrant yeah. unless you have consent. So you have to get an administrative warrant granted from the judge first. But that is, that that is a final, uh, you can take it for that if they don't, they just keep yeah. ignoring us a year, can. month and month and year after year. If somebody doesn't let you own the property, then yes, then, then an administrative warrant is probably appropriate <laughs> at that time because you've asked for consent, they've refused. Uh, you're concerned, you know, about the condition of the property, maybe safety issues or, you know, health, safety and welfare concerns, whatever. Well, but Sue's getting letters from people that are having, the neighbors are having rats on their property, cats chasing the rats, raccoons getting into things. I mean, it's, it's a couple of properties that are completely out of hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you have a situation like that, that's fair game for a judge to say that's, that's appropriate to to get an administrative warrant to, to we, allow you to go out to the property to, to we you know, with Kraft to go to take pictures. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and. Yeah, I notified Kraft, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I, I've done it with them before. They're, they know the process. I would say, Jim, let Andy look and make some recommendations yeah. based on the Thank ordinance for, sure. for your desires, and then let's talk about it at the April meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is the road projects for 2022 and culverts. Um, I have the list of culverts together. I submitted that to the Berks County uh, for the ARP funding. Uh, we'll see if we get anything there. Uh, we also, through McCarthy Engineering, submitted the um, Marion Drive culvert to the dirt and gravel low volume road. So we'll see if we get something there too. Um, the other two out of the four we're still waiting for permitting on and unfortunately one of the ones that we're waiting on permitting for had a, a very large hole today that, that butch had to deal with um I, I didn't get a chance to see the picture but i assumed small hole no no like three foot by three foot hole that very large hole so we're well, i just asked jim earlier is there is there an alternative to cold patch 
Because the cold patch we the, put in the cold and, patch is a band aid. Any yeah. any of the patching or putting in like a plate is, is very much a stopgap. The well, only way that we're going to be able to deal with these Jim is to tells me them. that there's a there's an alternative that's a little better and this cost is exactly the same. Okay, so, so it's warm patch. It's just Marikers. Okay, you just get Marikers so, hot and put it down. Okay, maybe so we can look well, let's into get some of that when they doing that. Yeah, let's get some of that in like May. At least try it. Yeah. See if we if it stays in the cold yeah. longer than the cold patch is. Yeah, it's again, it's it's a band aid. Even if it works a little better, the only yeah. way that we're going to fix that because there's just so much wrong with those four culverts, they got to be taken out and replaced. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next time we have an opening, somebody can take a picture before we close it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got it after the fact. Otherwise, I would have insisted. I mean, even a nice picture of Butch in the hole would have been. <laughs> well, been when good. I stopped out there on the way here, the the two. Uh, Teenage boys that I guess lived there at 540, they were like, yeah, I sat in the hole. I was completely in it. I was like, well, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but they had waiters on. They actually went in because, you know, I didn't have waiters to go in the creek today. Yeah. I mean, I can go back tomorrow with them. But he went down. He's like, yeah, yeah, I see stone running in from the side. There's a pile on the bottom of the pipe. And he's like, there's no pipe on the bottom. I'm like, yeah, we kind of figured that. Yeah, it was, it's, it's pretty yeah. much gone. All of these culverts are in diameter <clears throat> replacement. And the old patch is moving up and down under one foot. There's like Ooh. a sign or something was paid there. And yeah, that's goes, that's the one. One foot on it, it goes down three quarters of an inch. You let it go, it pops up three quarters of an inch. Yeah, if, if memory serves me, that's the one that somebody actually did put a road sign in there a number of years ago to, to fix it. Yeah, speed limit sign or a road sign? Yeah, speed limit sign I think it's a, I think it's a speed limit, possibly a twenty five mile per hour sign. Yeah, it looks <laughs> looks to be that size. And there's a void under it, so yeah, it it they need to be as soon as we get those permits and we gotta start moving on those. Yep. Um, also, in the road project related things, um, we're still talking to the, the A1 line painting about the lines that they didn't finish last year, working on getting them scheduled. Um, as a, a thought for the board, what I'd like to do this year is, um, even though we're still that, looking at- That's an agenda item. Oh, it is? Okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I, will, I will save that for a second then. Uh, so going to the next item then, the culvert on Reichert Road. Uh, we did get two quotes for the box culvert. Um, we'll possibly need to bid this out, but uh, I believe, Jim, you said there's two of the suppliers are co-stars. Yeah, I believe that both uh, Terry Hill and um, High are co-stars approved, so we could get a, try and get a quote from both of them. Okay, and we wouldn't uh, have to put out the bid based on the fact that they're co-stars? As long as they're co-stars or the national uh, purchasing conglomerate, or there's the other one in Exeter, right? There, I think there's three of them they can use. It's going to be part of the three of them. Okay, excellent. So if we have the three written bids or for three written quotes, excuse me, um, that would satisfy the, the legal requirement. Right. Well, you have two, but we they're not co-stars approved. So technically, you would have, if you got one and it was in the ballpark, you wouldn't have to get it. Right. Anymore. Right. Yeah. Those, those two would count for the price, but we can't we could, we just couldn't buy word to them without, because they're not co-stars approved. Okay, that's fair. I think that'll work out better. That'll be a lot faster than having to put it out to bid. I did email... Terry Hill and Hyde today, but I haven't heard that. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Sure. And thank you, Jim. Sure. Next is the Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Line Painting. Thank you, Sue. I mm -hmm. just glanced past that. Uh, I so we missed one. What was that? 12. The, oh, the Colbert. No, yep. 12. Number 12. So we're on 11. We're on 11. We're on 11. Line Painting. Okay. How did I do that? I've, I've got yeah, 11. 12. No, we can do this. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, no worries. No worries. No worries. <laughs> so with the line painting, we've reached out to try to get the, the, the line painting that was omitted last year done. Uh, the crosswalk, some of the, the yellows, some of the whites. Um, and what I'd like to do, even if we're going to be looking at doing some other road work potentially, is start doing the quadrant yep. approach for the line painting. Yep. Um, what I said to, to Butch is even though we have like 36 miles of road, when you talk line painting, it's actually significantly higher than that because a lot of roads will have the double yellows and the outside whites. So when you're looking at that, you're actually going two to three times the, the, the paint in linear feet. Mm -hmm. So we'd actually probably be looking at doing like basically 36 miles of, of paint every year if, if we do it this way. Um, I want to look at the, the cost breakdown to make sure that that is within the budget, but um, I think there's enough wear and tear on the lines year over year oh, that sure. we could probably benefit from having a fresh coat at one, one quarter of the township. Oh yeah. 
So no, it just doesn't. It doesn't stay the same. Junk anymore. Yeah, you used to be able to get five years of. Yeah. Did you say one? Yeah, one. I'm dividing it into quarters. Okay. Yeah. So it used to be half. For you, so you might be just half. Yeah. So let me, if I can, because my immediate concern is cost. I don't know if we'd be able to do half and fit it into the budget. If it works, if it fits, then absolutely. But well, if. We didn't do anything last year, so we don't have to yeah. Well, I mean, they're, we're still having them do the stuff from last year. I'm talking about doing, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about doing a full quarter plus whatever they didn't finish last year. You'd think that, but no. So the stuff that we did last year was 15 miles of, of road. And it's, I can show it to you later, but it's, it's a, about an eighth of the township in terms of like coverage. I'm thinking probably on would be the southwestern edge what oh what date I, we need to get dates from a1 they haven't given us dates yet yeah yeah they they came out they started and then they just didn't finish and i, I didn't get an explanation as to why because i actually was out here the one day i took a day off of work and they were out marking there's like you might even still be able to see it there's marks on the intersections for putting in crosswalks so they just never came back and did it so and i'm sure they'll tell us the weather didn't cooperate yeah now yeah. yeah i mean when all else fails blame COVID. okay next is the hiring of an office staff so we had talked about this a little bit at the workshop uh, potentially hiring another part-time uh, assistant secretary um we had appointed dan as kind of the assistant but dan's dan's been occupied dan's been busy uh and there's a there's a, a need sue has a lot going on and we could use an extra pair of hands to help her file or, or just do simple things so that she can take more time for the minutes and you know all the other stuff just so i go home um, at two o'clock yeah and say so, so you can actually time, leave yeah. it at the Last time you're supposed night. to yeah. leave at too um the other thing that irene you had asked about was uh moving the, the one desk. of the desks over yeah. so that there's more space for sue to file in there so that it's not as, as piled up she's got a wonderful system for sue but I, we can we can no, feel that sue you're getting doesn't. kind of <laughs> yeah. we can we can feel that you're getting a little claustrophobic in there so yeah. i'll i'll turn it over to you if you want to yeah i just want to move the desk over any problems about moving the desk over and uh having a lock put on that door i probably move a couple of file that one file cabinet that i only use anyway into that particular area it just makes it a little bit easier for me we just need to get another printer i don't know um do you need another tower and uh if you're gonna have more than one person in yeah. there eventually yeah. yeah we can do that that's okay. that's something let's let's yeah. put that on like next month's agenda like okay. additional uh, office hardware um there is a lock on that door it doesn't have a deadbolt but it does have the same lock as the, oh, the office okay. do you want uh i never use that lock like the door to, I never use that lock. It's the same key as lock system. Yeah. This oh. door right here. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So it's already there. We just don't need I it. I think we should get a deadbolt or something. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we can, get, we can get a yeah. deadbolt, but I'm just saying yeah. like you, I, you, I, we could move the desk over and still lock the space okay. without putting a deadbolt yeah. on it. So, yeah. How many hours are we talking part-time person? Oh, they need to be mm -hmm. here five, the same time that Sue's here pretty much. So 30. I, I mean, I personally don't think it needs to be five days a week. Yeah. But generally, but I'm here, I, I'm in the office doing my stuff at least 10 hours a week. I'd, I'd say yeah. probably, look, let's look at like 20 hours. 20 a week. hours, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And we were going to write up a job description, yeah. come up with something. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the yeah. specific thing would yeah, be job hours. description and creating a assistant role so that we would be able to set a different pay rate than what we're paying yeah. to. So. Okay. There's, there's a, a little bit of light yeah. work that we have to do yeah. on that, but I, I, I certainly do think we need an extra right. set of hands. Oh yeah, there's there's so much to do that I feel like I'm treading water, and I'm not even talking about anything that's related financially. Just wait, yeah. just just the stuff that we have to file. At I mean, time. today yeah. I didn't start scanning stuff for the meeting tonight until quarter after two because the phone was ringing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Rob Azonia just did a job description for the same position Did so it? maybe you can ask lisa to oh that would be great to borrow that thank you yeah, yeah. thanks good okay. and then we can move the desk anytime yeah, yeah. as i say yeah i'll talk to butch yeah the only thing i'd have to do is i'd have to run you a uh, network <laughs> yeah yeah 
<laughs> well, the, the plan, well, I, we would still have to have a computer in there for whoever's going to assist Sue so mm -hmm. they could look up everything. And yeah. Do, like, like I said, we'll yeah. talk about that. I can, or, I can yeah. get Or if you don't mind if I sit in there, like to print up labels and stuff. Well, I mean, honestly, you can, you can sit wherever you want. I think having you over here during the day, though, yeah. is probably the best for people that well, walk in. It will be in the beginning, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we can certainly have space over there if you need to spread out plans or something like that. Because right now, you don't, you don't have any counter space to do anything yeah so yeah I'm, I'm not opposed to it it's space that we're not using real well otherwise do you, you want to make a motion around that motion to, move the motion to move the desk oh sure i'm gonna make a motion to move the desk and the filing cabinet move one desk out of this current office into what's currently described as the aa room along with moving file cabinets into the current township office, as well as moving some other filing cabinets into what we currently call the AA room. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. When are they putting the, uh, the system on the door? I haven't heard. heard I contacted him twice and he hasn't gone back to me. I'll Is he going to put a buzzer on that door? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's perfect. So if you're back there, you're going to hear the buzzer. Yeah. So, well, it has to be buzz in. Yeah. It's buzz in. Yeah. Okay. But you'll know if somebody's yeah, here. I think yeah. So. I think so. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Next item on the agenda is the County of Berks and, uh, and Berks Municipal Partnership Breakfast. Uh, they are co-hosting a breakfast for a maximum of two township supervisors at 8 a.m. on Friday, April 29th, 2022, at the Colebrook Dale Railroad in Boyardstown. Uh, RSVPs are required by April 11th. Um, when we looked at the dates on Saturday, I'm I'm not going to be able to, to attend that. I'm not going to be able to get off of work. I believe Jim, you said likewise. Um, so at this point, I, I don't think we have to do anything because none of us will be in attendance. I mean, no. can you go? I can, but that's like my only day off that okay. week. So I'd like to not be up at the crack okay. of dawn. I'll just not respond. So. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Morgan Stanley class action settlement. Uh, as a former pension plan client, we are eligible for uh, participation in a class action settlement regarding a data breach uh, around decommissioning of IT equipment that contained client data back in 2016 and 2019. The only way to receive a monetary payment for losses suffered is to file a claim online by June 2nd. According to Morgan Stanley's rep that uh, Sue talked to, at most we would get back a couple hundred dollars. Um, we can ask to be excluded or to object to the settlement by May 3rd. If we do nothing, we will not get any monetary payment, but we'll be entitled still to enroll in the Aura's Financial Shield Service for at least 24 months, which would provide against fraud protection. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to opt into the Morgan Stanley class action settlement and to notify the former secretary, Janice Cern. Mm -hmm. So once we opt in, we just have to kind of wait and see what develops. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Public Works Association. Uh, they will resume meetings in 2022, uh, May 25th, and the trade show on September 28th. No uh, additional membership dues are required if your dues were paid in 2020. Motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize road crew, board of supervisors, or secretary to attend the meetings in 2022 if they are interested. Uh, next is the Aikens audit for 2021. Uh, the audit has completed. Uh, everything was advertised in the Reading Eagle and subsequently accepted by the DCED. Uh, there were a couple of advisory items yeah, in the audit, but stuff. housekeeping stuff, yeah. but nothing major. It's a very, very good, clean audit. Yep. Next is the entry door replacement. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize Mike's remodeling to replace the entry door with a 36 inch outswing door with a 14 inch side light and trim, new hardware, and to also repair the wall around the door for a total of $4,700. Um, the door, I believe we said we're probably looking at like six to eight months to get the door in because of just how long it takes to get those now. So next item on the agenda after that is the leaf blower. Uh, the road crew is in need of a leaf blower to be able to do certain groundskeeping and road clearing exercises. A uh, motion was made at the workshop to authorize the purchase of a still DR600 leaf blower at Eblings for a total of $449. Uh, Butch, did you pick that up already? Does it work nice? 
Oh, you didn't use it yet. I'm surprised. I would have thought that would have been a kid on Christmas moment. Um, okay. Wait. Uh, are you guys still going out Saturday to do Tulpi again, weather permitting or no? Uh, oh, the brush is busted. Uh, I got the parts today yeah. for the brush. Okay. Okay. It's the whole road that needs to be done. It's not just up coming down. It's like everywhere because all that stuff is going into the, uh, that, the drain uh, system. That, I think so. I think I think they do. But I'll find out who owns it. I'll ask them. Because I asked a couple of neighbors to sweep up the stuff because there's so much stuff that's collecting in that and the drains mm -hmm. and, and we can't have that. Because what's going to happen is if once those get clogged, their houses are going to flood. I'm fine because I got the retention pond behind me, but all these houses, it's, it's not going to be. And we already had we had two houses mm -hmm. flood last year, so okay. yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Kevin, me and Kevin were talking this week. And, yeah. Uh, we are, yeah. 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 Just give me a heads up because I'll get John out there and I'll get uh, Josh out there to help you too. <laughs> And once, once they see, you know, my dad will probably come out, everyone will probably come out to help, at least just to get the stuff into smaller piles, so it's easier to pick uh, up. Uh, yeah. That's probably, yeah. He actually has this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all, all, all you have to do is put the word out and, and people go out and, and they, they, everyone wants their neighborhood clean. So, and no one likes getting those rocks kicked up all over their cars. It, it's a lot. I didn't realize how, how much it was until, yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the, yeah. once the brush thing works, is I want to, go around one of the things that dave mentioned is it might be worthwhile to look and see if we can get kind of a self-contained street sweeper at some point that we can tow behind one of the trucks or something rather than paying the street sweeping idea. company annually to do it it might be worth the capital expenditure to yeah. buy something yeah. and just use it year after year so i haven't even begun to look at what those cost that's okay that's yeah. okay no, that's, yeah no, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I don't appreciate it. While we're on roads, are we ever going to put that sign up? Slow, slow down. It needs batteries. Say that again. The speed sign. The speed sign. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I poked at it the one day, and I, I couldn't get it to take the charge. So it's either something wrong with the battery. I got to come out here with a, a meter and, and poke at it some more. But well, Roy, Roy was telling me, don't use it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, battery goes cycles dead. wear out. So I need to check and see if it's we have just a dead like cell a car. or yeah. if it's something with the charger. Because if it's just a battery, I, I can just go to. Walmart. Is there just one battery in there? Yeah, yeah. It's, there two? Uh, yeah, it's just it's the one. It's the one okay. single. Some of them have two. Yeah, it's a single deep cycle battery. So I'll I'll do that for the the spring, so we can get it back out on like Main Street or something. Okay. But I did I did look at it in the fall, and I couldn't immediately get it to work, and I just put it back in the garage. <laughs> Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Municipal Leaders Grant Workshop. Uh, Senator, for, Senator Christopher Gephardt is organizing a Municipal Leaders State Grant and Funding Workshop on Tuesday, April 12th at the Lebanon Expo Center. The departments covered include General Services, PennVest, Conservation and Natural Resources, Community and Economic Development, and the State Republican Caucus Services Grant Team. Registration is required. Um, if I'm able to get off of work that day, I'm going to try to go to that because I think that's going to be incredibly informative. Um, so, Jim, if you're able to, to go, I'll try to go too. But as long as, as long as we can get one of us there, I think it's the big thing. Yeah, I may be able to go. Okay. If there's so many things to peruse for for um, grants all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. yeah. The the thing about that is there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity. Was there's a lot of things that we're not eligible for. They're yeah. very specific grants. Yeah. Um. So finding finding one amongst the sea of of things is the, the challenge and yeah. the, the, the beyond that it's challenging to, to make sure that yeah. you apply in a way that you're actually yeah. going to be viable yeah. to get it did you ever speak to that person at bciu or for the grant writing yeah we, did you ever get i have not got a hold of them yet but i'll okay. continue to okay. try and get them this week okay i have one other person i know i think i could contact about grant writing also so if we could get some people that are interested and find out fees and whatnot because it, it's definitely worth it yeah 
Yeah. Okay, so that concludes the main agenda items. Um, I have a couple of comments. Uh, first one being that police report, there was really nothing outlandish in the police report. There were uh, 46 security checks, a um, couple of uh, complaints, nothing out, out of the ordinary. Um, it was uh, Chief Kirshner's last day. He's retiring as of today. Um, I believe uh, Brian Dronick has been made the police chief. Hi, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Congratulations. Uh, I'd like to send uh, Chris a card congratulating him on his retirement. Yep. Yes. Um, so I'll, I'll make a motion to send uh, now ex-police chief, uh, chief Kirshner a congratulations on your retirement card. Second. Second. I'm shopping for it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> to Jim second. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Who's getting the card? Irene, you get the card. I'll get the card. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I can stop tomorrow. Good. Uh, other than that, we already covered the MTCA items for, for attention. Uh, I don't have anything further. Irene? Um, I guess uh, John wanted me to make mention of a couple of things. So, um, he's still worried about flooding on Canal Road, and he wanted to, I have to get him to just probably make a short video and we could play it at the meetings then so it could be a little bit more of a discussion, but to get some feedback on that. The, uh, I guess the uh, dry race boards fell through. Yeah, so he just wanted to, to get something in here so that this room could be used as a command center if, and or I should say when there's another incident, I guess surprise, well, with the prior incidents in town, the everyone brought their own apparatus, which are completely well suited for, for the scenario. But if it was something that we would be uh, designating as an incident, we would be running it from here. So yeah. and it's actually, I'm quite surprised at how much stuff like as supervisors, we, we can't control about certain issues. So he wants to be prepared for that. And he went to a local um, training session on it. So. I have to get them in here to update you guys on yeah, more. I'd, I'd love to have them yeah, on the meetings yeah. to discuss that. Um, first point, the flooding on Canal Road. I know we had talked about that yeah. before. I have no problem putting up the gates. The yeah. only thing that we might have to do is we might have to talk to Andy about, um, I guess it would technically be an easement if we have to go outside of the right-of-way to, to place like a pole. Uh, yeah. But having something that we can swing closed uh, and secure, or in the case of it being open, secure it so that somebody doesn't swing it. Uh, but be able to block the road off when it's it's flooding in a dangerous way. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I know just from living over there, when it floods, there are sections of the road that are easily under three feet of water. Yeah. It's um, scary. It's yeah. a very scary situation. So. Uh, second yeah. point, uh, we'll have to keep looking for the dry erase. And it's a shame that like the wall over there isn't a little smoother because we can yeah. just get a can of dry erase paint and make the wall a dry erase board. But it's it's so lumpy that I don't think that would work real well. Does anyone use a blackboard? Probably in a pinch he could, but I yeah. think there's a preference on whiteboard because it's easy and you can use yeah. like multiple colors yeah. without getting all dusty. And are they magnetized usually? Yeah, usually yeah. most whiteboards are yeah, not all magnetized. Are, but most so are. they can hang stuff on it. How many does he want? Three or four? I'll take whatever you get. Yeah, whatever, literally yeah. whatever you can and get. Yeah. Any size requirement? The ones I was looking at were four by six. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. Are, that's a good size for a whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep looking. So, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Jim, any comments for you? Uh, no. Okay, Andy. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Jim. Hello. Any comments for you? Uh, just touch on two things tonight. Uh, the Cold Summit project that everyone's probably aware of over the county line in North Creek Township with the cold refrigerator, whatever you're going to call it, warehousing. Um, they've had several meetings. Basically, the meetings were at one was Dark Barrow, but the borough was the borough was in attendance. Township was in attendance. Um, they were in attendance. Since that time, there's been no resubmission of anything to any agency: PennDOT, Lebanon County, Mill Creek, Wilmersdorf, or uh, Marion. So we're kind of waiting to see what they come back with and see um, to address the traffic concerns that, if we remember that. The, the borough and the township went together and jointly retained traffic planning design to do that study, which we're going to try and build the applicant so they pay for it anyway, so it doesn't come out of anybody's coffers. <coughs> um, 
And there's, it was discussed at PennDOT again. Actually, there's just a normal staff meeting which occurred a week and a half ago. PennDOT District uh, 5 and District 8 are well aware of it for everyone because of the county line. Um, on the Burke side, we deal with Penn and Allentown. On the Le Lebanon side, they deal with Penn dot Harrisburg. So even though the project's in Lebanon, all the traffic's going to come through Marion and Wilmersdorf. So the Allentown District Office um, specifically asked that Wilmersdorf be satisfied with traffic improvements. And currently, with the, they're showing no improvements at all, which is unacceptable. Um, and they're looking like 490 trucks a day, additional mm -hmm. trucks a day on 419. And around a thousand additional uh, passenger cars. So obviously that's going to, you know, and they're going to find shortcuts to get from 419 down school and through marrying and around the other way to not go down 419. So um, the borough of Wilmersdorf does not want this at all. Just, yeah. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. I, that's been made clear. I, I don't understand I mean, how crazy. those roads could even support a fraction of that traffic. They, they can't. They can't. And hopefully at the end of the day, Penn, both Penn, uh, District 5 and District, District 8 will agree that like, there's just not a suitable road network to get that kind of volume of trucks and cars yeah. to basically, I mean, it's a farm area. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not like an industrial area or anything like that. It's through residential borough to a farm area and then the sneak around is to cut through South. So, I mean, either way, we're impacting two residential areas by this development. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting because the solicitor for Mill Creek Township didn't know anything about the project. So they hadn't even submitted to Mill Creek Township. Yeah, I, I told them. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. You Apparently they went to the zoning hearing board to get a zoning variance for the height of the building because I think the building's like 150 feet tall. Or something. Yeah. Well, they, they were told that all of the traffic was going to be round. All of the product was coming in and out on rail. On rail, not that's what no creatures told. That's that's a wow. big detail. Right. So obviously if it all came in and out of rail, it's probably not an issue. Right. But over a thousand cars and almost five hundred tractor trailers every day is a big traffic issue to this immediate area. Yeah. So we're on top of that. Andy's on top of it. We're in Penn Dot's ears. Um that's kind of where it stands now. I, I don't know. I think, you know, we kind of sent them back to the drawing board and said, well, what you're proposing is inadequate. You need to propose something that's going to make these improvements work. And I really don't know. That they can. Yeah. Because some of the buildings, like the church is right up on the yep. sidewalk and they, you know, they're not going to tear the church down. Yep. There's a bunch of properties. They're just not going to you know, tear those older historic buildings down. Yep. So I don't, you know, I know everyone's concerned about it. We're concerned about it. We're monitoring it, but Right now, we're kind of in a holding pattern because they haven't communicated anything back to us in about, what, six weeks now? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So that's Cold Summit. And then uh, Alan Stonecroft, apparently they built all the houses now, and they want to um, finish paving and all that stuff. So Did they do the roll test? Yes. Week? How'd that go? It, there, was no, there was no settlement through the proof rolling areas. So kind of just, just a, I won't read the whole letter, but... Just back in May of 2020, we met landmark on site and identified and painted areas <coughs> where the base didn't look good. Also identified curb that needed to be replaced. Uh, it was pretty much most of Loganbury and Sweet Birch. So then on May, March 17th, they brought a loaded triax with 23 tons of stone. We witnessed it going over all those areas. There was no heaving or moving of the sub base. Uh, we're still requiring them. Any of those areas where the sub base it does not look like it should to mill the sub base out four inches, tack coat it, put four inches of sub base back in, tack coat it, put the wearing course on. Um, they'll be milling the road around utilities, taking the little humps up, up that, that are in so people can get in there the driveways now. Um, we also told them that any section of curb, this is kind of following PennDOT criteria. <laughs> if you have a crack or a chip in section of curb, you can saw cut and seal with an epoxy. And if you have a chip, you can chip, you can use this grout sealer. They have some sections where they sealed six, seven cracks in a section. And we basically said, if there's more than one crack or um, spalling in a 10 foot section curb, the whole section has to be taken out and replaced. Okay. Uh, they're planning to schedule this work for the end of May. And what we've told them to do is for, for the residents, don't go in there and mill all this stuff out so people can't get in and out of their driveways. Only mill out today what can be overlaid tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
So we don't, you know, there's going to be some inconvenience, obviously, but we don't want to come in and mill the whole section out and tack it. And then it's Wait three weeks later and people can't get in and out of their driveways. Yeah. So that's basically, we, want, we wanted to give an update on that because we knew there was a concern of supervisors, also the residents of Stonecroft were interested in that, you know, and what was going on with the peripheral. And so I wanted to make sure we reported all that tonight. Excellent. Thank you. Jim? HOA been notified about all this? I work for you guys, not yeah. the HOA. So, so, so Jim, <laughs> I was going to say, would you be willing to notify some of the people in the HOA well, that's and share, sure. share the McCarthy letter? Yeah, I wanted to send a draft letter to the, to the township to see if you want anything changed or added. Um, then we can issue the final letter, you know, the next day or so. And then, yeah. then if you, you know, Jim, if you want to take it at the HOA, it's no problem. But, or you can send it. As long as no, I get it. Just, yeah. Because yeah. I know they're, they're concerned about it. Right. Everything. I think we tried to reach out to them. Now, you're doing a great job, level, right? You're doing a great job, and I appreciate that, and I'm sure they do too. Unfortunately, we tried to we tried to get them out there for the proof rolling. I don't think I think somebody Sean said towards the end somebody came, but yeah. it was kind of a more of a last minute thing. And I kind of said to Sean, "Did did you contact Sue in case yeah. anybody from the HOE wants to be out there?" But it was only gave them like a day's notice, I think. So I got I got a day's notice. Well, I got notice that morning. I was in Philadelphia. So oh, okay. I couldn't go. Correct. So I think based on the previous meetings with the HOA over there, I think the areas that we've addressed. I mean, I, I was actually happy that it was you know not just because they'd have to tear it and replace it, but that we weren't dealing with a failed sub base below that we're just dealing with. You know that that base course has been there for years, so it just wore away. So they're gonna have to mill it out, put in proper base. Sure. And I think that should satisfy the concerns of. I think it would. Yeah, because you know there were some even in our office there was some well we could pay over it up but it's probably going to crack through and I'm like no we're not going to we're not going to do that you know this has to be a street that when we're you know we're done inspecting it even though it's not a dedicated Marion Street it has to meet it has to meet the codes. same criteria and we wouldn't we wouldn't let them put that over top of the street we were taking for dedication so. I took, the the, obvious, I took the same approach. The of, obvious concern is that they're responsible for that. Right, road, forever. They want to make sure that it's done properly. Sure. Right, and we don't want them to see it overlay. And then yeah. two years from now, those cracks come right up through it. Yeah. So any of the, like the small, even the small cracks where two seams were together and opened up, were requiring them to crack seal all that Good. with liquefied emulsion, asphalt emulsion before they overlay too. Because we, you know, we're trying to minimize any type of reflective cracking through the wearing course. So that they Association has a nice road. That's, um, thank you very much on their behalf for doing such a great job. Sure. I don't know. They're, they're real happy. Well, <laughs> some of us will be happy. Well, no, no, I meant landmark. <laughs> I meant landmark. <laughs> oh, landmark. No, they won't be happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's all we had on that. I guess the other open things that Anthony, Andy and I have to circle back with them on is there's still the fire. Um, fire issues and pond issues and floats and all that stuff down at the fire pond that have to be dealt about with at that time uh, i think it is that time plus we said we wouldn't release any more escrow for phase four until all the roads were done the street lights were in we haven't had a chance to go over at night and see if their street lights are working but um we'll do that before they would close them out and all that stuff that was agreed to in 2019 18 or 19 they we're dealing to, they have to drain the pond is that my understanding they have to clean the pond out. So yeah, they're gonna have to drain the pond, drain the pond. clean it out, the bottom, clean out all, clean the it out, all the sediment, and haul that away. Uh, then put the floats on there. There's a couple other things they had to do on the well pump. Um, the restore of them, obviously, fill the pond back up. And then the fire, the fire chief has to then give it a final sign off when it's all done. Yeah. Work. yeah. So, but it sounds like they're trying to wrap everything up. You know, with the paving in May, and I would assume the rest of that, if they're trying to get their escrow released, it's because the houses are done, that they should be out there in, you know, same time, May, June, July, wrapping all that stuff up. They probably want to wait till July, August when it's hot to drain that pond and try and get in there. But I wouldn't recommend going in the pond in April or May to try and clean up the set there. <laughs> That'd be brisk. And it'll be sloppy and yeah. muddy. There's acres beside that too that is now for sale. I don't know how many acres it's it's not 26. 26, 26 or seven acres. I don't know. But that I think is in Wilmersdorf. So if they buy no, that, there's a Marion Township. Is that still Marion? Half 
half half and half, right? Half in Hanover. Parson in Hanover. We may not be married with them yet if they buy. Well, Jim, thank you very much to your office, especially you. for everyone that helps me out when I'm making the phone call or sending an email. I really oh, appreciate sure. everyone's help. That's, so, That's what we're here for. Yeah, thank and you. I didn't forget how to drive here like Andy and Jim asked. <laughs> <laughs> But that's all I have, unless you have something else that I didn't cover. No, thank you for covering that. Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay, at this time, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.23 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Manager.